music will affect your viewers um, response to your video good or bad so you have to choose it carefully if you're going to be using music in your videos in any sort of regular format whether it's one song or multiple songs put a little bit of uh, budget aside and actually invest in that and your videos will come out better because you spent a little bit of time and a little bit of money investing in your actual music the last thing you want to do is take away from your very important message whatever that is to, to train to teach to persuade to market to whatever it might be. You don't want someone to lose that message because your audio wasn't doing the job of helping them in to invest or engage with whatever it is that you're trying to communicate. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. This is part two of our conversation about using music. In the last episode, we talked about when you should use music, where to source it, how to select it. In this one, we're gonna talk about using music versus narration, some of the challenges, some of the things that you should be thinking about with that. So go ahead and listen to the rest of this episode. If you missed the last one, go and listen to that one first for this part two of using music with the Visual Lounge. But I wanna get into talking about the challenges of using music, like we've talked about like sourcing music, when you pick music, but I wanna talk about actually the challenges. Cause one of the things I mentioned that video before that the audio level was just wrong. And to me, that was, it was devastating. Cause I thought I had done all the right things. I thought I had brought, you know, I'd brought the music level down and it still just didn't work, it didn't, didn't work. And there's a couple of reasons for that. And I, I, we don't need to go into that, but I'm, I'm looking for advice on how to make sure I, no one else has this problem with the the my audio, my voice, and my music clashing. So what advice can we give to our audience about this? And and I realize some of this is probably even better as a as a visual, like showing, like, oh, well, here's how you do it. But we're mostly a podcast here. We do have some video stuff, but I think let's we, let's just talk through the concepts. Cause ultimately at the end of the day, I think it's all gonna be trial and error. Like you've got to try it. But uh Help me avoid this problem from happening again because I've been nervous to use music since it happened because it, you know, being told your video sucks is not, not what you want to hear. I think we just got to the real reason why Matt doesn't use music in his videos anymore. <laughs> it has nothing to do with that they're tutorials. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I know it does. Well, um, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is, of course, Camtasia 2021 and the new amazing effect in there, uh, Emphasize Audio, which I love, is literally drag and drop onto your narrator's voice. And if there's music under it, it's going to dip the music to a reasonable level so that it's quieter than the narrator's voice. And when the narration's done, it brings the music back up. So without having to do anything than drag and drop this effect, uh, you can you can dip the music down because my normal response to that question would have been audio ducking, which is the opposite, which is where you've got a narration track on top and an audio, you know, excuse me, like a song below it. Uh, and you would find the beginning of the narration and the end of the narration and put a couple points in the audio track. And then you'd lower the middle of the audio track. And, and it's a lot of tweaking and it's a very manual job. Um, now you can, you know, in, in some editors, you set decibels and some editors, you're setting percentages of volume. Um, and basically you want to bring it down typically uh, to like 25%. I've done negative 20 or 25 decibels um, to get it lower than that narrative track. Um, and you're saying and that and to I the music, right, Andy? The, sorry, the yes, music. to the music. The music okay. should be down 22. So if, if it's at a scale of 100%, then it should be all the way down to 25%. If it's in decibels, I typically would go about... I'd usually start by trying it around negative 25 decibels. Um, but again, it's it's all dependent. Like how loud is your speaker? Are they a, are they a kind of a soft-spoken person? Because then it probably needs to go quieter. Um, are they loud and boisterous? Then you're probably fine. <laughs> so um, it, it by ducking it just that standard. So it, there's a number of ways of doing it. Um, yeah, does that answer that question? I feel like I just lost my train of thought right at the end. No, I think it, I think it does. So... Andy, I know you have some strong feelings. We're putting all the pressure on Andy, Justin. This isn't this great. You can just ask, pe pepper him with questions. So here's what I did. I did that, right? I brought it down and it was probably around that 25% level for music. Okay. I listened through my earbuds to hear that. Is that the uh, way I should okay. have done it? So here's the other kicker, right? And, and man, I wish I had a great answer for this too. Um, earbuds are notoriously high treble right so we have there's for those who don't know there's there's treble mid tones and bass 
Um, and you can all adjust your car stereos with these things nowadays too. So, so there's usually uh, the three levels, the highs, the mids, the lows. Um, and AirPods don't have a lot of that low end. So you're missing part of the audio track. Um, the other thing to do is take your AirPods out, play it through the computer speakers. Still a lot of trouble. Um, maybe you have a pair of headphones you can use. They should have a little bit more bass in them. But you also can't control what your listeners are going to hear it on. So, so if you're using AirPods, they might be using AirPods. Does it sound okay? Switch to the computer. Does it sound okay? If not, make a small tweak, put the AirPods back in. So there's a lot of playing with it to get it just right. Uh, sometimes I do forget because I listen on professional headphones. You know, these are studio quality headphones. If I'm only listening to what I'm doing on those, then I'm missing probably most of what our viewers are going to hear it on. So uh, I've, I've made that mistake too many times because I get such good quality audio. I forget that they're not going to hear that really great bass line. They're only getting these high treble lines and it sounds kind of scratchy. So <laughs> I need to I need to tweak it a little bit for that. Well, well, I, now I, I, I will not make that mistake again. Hopefully I'll probably forget, but so I'm, I'm thinking about this, this process, right? You've got, you talked about the ducking and bringing this down. And of course the cool, awesome feature in Camtasia that will do it automatically. Should I, if, if I'm editing my video, I've got the intro probably coming in where I'm not talking. It's like, you know, it's just starting up, get their attention, comes down underneath. Should I be going up and down if there's lulls in the, you know, if I'm not talking, like, to me, that feels like a lot, like, or is that a preference? Like, it, I'm, I'm trying to determine, like, how much work should I be putting into my the audio? Because it feels like and I, I could spend a lot of time just editing music. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You could. I think music sometimes can take more time than video um, because you can't see it as well. So there's a lot of I mean, we're editing with our eyes and our ears um, and, and you're missing things between the two, you know, um, yeah, if and so, our hearts, Andy. Don't forget, we're editing with our hearts. <laughs> oh God! All right. Yes, and our hearts, of course. Oh man, how could I miss that one? So I would, I would say this. My favorite answer. It depends. Um, and and I think here we're gonna say it depends because all right, let's talk about the videos cut up into five sections. You're teaching people one, two, three, four, and five, and uh, number one is on screen with a big graphic and the music should be up a little bit louder because no one's speaking. And then the music ducks down while you explain how to do process number one. And then the screen comes up with process number two and the music should come back up, right? So now we've got kind of a, a visual audio reference that we're switching sections. Um, and I think in that situation, it's absolutely um, expected, okay, and you know, probably best practice to, yeah, bring the music back up. It's it's a transitioning sequence. Um, and now the audio plays just as much of a part of that as the video does. Um, if you are doing a tutorial and you're talking about like, well, I took 10 seconds to show something on screen and I wasn't talking and then I start talking again, that's different. You're not using audio to cue people into the fact that you're not talking. You're actually trying to get them to focus on what you're showing. So I don't think in that instance, you'd want to bring audio back up because again, as you said at the beginning, they're only going to be able to focus on one thing. And even if you're not talking, they need to keep their eyes peeled uh, for what you know, you're doing on screen. So I think in that instance, yeah, I, I would leave the audio uh, where it is and kind of give them that you know, um, steadiness. Like, yep, this is all the same. You should be watching. Uh, your cues are on screen. Okay. So you're well, saying that... there's a lot of nuance and there's no good way to do it other than to try it out. This is why we're going to get letters is because people are like, we want answers. <laughs> and I, no, have I think, no, answers no I think I don't even think it's like you want answers, but man, you want that, you know, it, it, you want it to be easy sometimes, you right. know, you just want like, man, should adding music to a video shouldn't be this hard. It shouldn't have, there shouldn't be so many, you know, things that go into it and what I should be thinking about. But I think, um, for me, somebody who's not a, um, a video editor by trade, one of the things that I'll just tell everybody in, in case it's useful to them is I, I like to kind of re reverse engineer other videos. Like the one you, you were talking about that you guys watched earlier. Like I would be taking that and looking at that and figuring out, okay, well, I don't, I might not know the science behind why they did that, but I know that was the end effect and maybe I can get somewhere close to that. Yeah. That's interesting. You say that too, because there is, gosh, there's elements of science and there's elements of art, but there's also elements of math. I mean, <laughs> video and audio have so many different things come together. Like I went into video because it was a creative field and I was excited about it. And I wasn't that great of a math student. My kids aren't around. I don't think I can say that. So, um, 
but like there's a lot of of work with math uh whether it's positioning on on you know the screen uh, the x y axis like there's all sorts of stuff science there's there's reasons why we you know use music or or even um gosh it could be social sciences i guess too um why we would use music in some instances and not in others and then art of course right everything's going to be subjective and you're going to have to make these decisions yourself because does this work for my video and sometimes you might not be the person that should be making that subjective call. Um, Matt, we've done this in the past with the TechSmith Academy. One of our videos, uh, I think it was on scripting, where you suggested people bring in a group of people to review it. Um, and they may hack it apart and they may tear it apart. And that's true of videos, too. We use video review here internally all the time for people to be able to look at a video. Does this work? Is the music too loud? Should I have this lower third here? Um, it helps to get more than just your eyes and ears on a video so that you know my headset sounds fine. Um, this used to happen with a coworker all the time. I'd send something to him and he'd be like, oh man, that sounds, it's really like loud in my ears. And I'm like, it shouldn't be. I've got the decibels right where they want. But his headset was, you know, on the cheaper end of things and it just wasn't playing back very nicely. So we had to figure that out. Yeah. Well, I've got at least one more topic I want to pepper Andy with that I think, because uh, <laughs> here's the challenge. We've talked about picking music, the right tone, you know, and stuff like that. But from an editing perspective, so I'm going to do this ducking. I struggle to find music that fits my video in length. Like I've got a video oh, yeah. that is like two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. And it's like, how do I, how do we go about getting music that's going to fit together? Like I, particularly lately, it feels like I've been doing these longer 15 minute, 20 minute presentations that could use a little music to help indicate some changes or move things along, you know, give people a beat to move along to, right? It's got some pace to it, but it's really hard to find 25 minute songs if, <laughs> if you haven't tried that are not just, you know, like not some long classical Mozart piece or something like that, which maybe is not the right style. So is there something we could... Andy, is there a way to do this that I'm I'm just overlooking? I'm guessing like everything to what Justin said, it doesn't feel like it should be this hard, but it is hard. So what what advice yeah. do we have about this? Um well it depends. No, I'm just kidding. Um <laughs> I That's think That's it. Thanks uh, everybody for listening today. <laughs> yeah, we're done. That's it. No, uh music editing is a is a whole different monster. So I'm gonna harken back to, to weddings again, because I did that for a long time and, and music was often the bane of my existence until I'd find the right thing. And then it was like, oh, it was magic when it would just hit right. But I would usually do like right after the wedding, I would give them like a 30, 15 to 30 second teaser of the day, like that week where I just put together a quick clip and be like, hey, here's a reminder of it. And they loved it. And then, you know, a couple weeks later, I'd give them the full feature film, which for, for me was, you know, somewhere between nine and 12 minutes. Typically, um, we can talk more about that if people are just astounded that that was the length of the video. But regardless, now I've got a nine to 12 minute video and a 30 second video. And I typically would use at least one, you know, of the same songs. So how does it work in both a long form and a short form? A number of ways you can either, you know, we talked about the structure of a song, right? So there's the intro, there's the verse, chorus, bridge. Um, and gosh, I love a bridge for, for video editing. Um, but I would typically cut out the intro because the intro is a build, right? It's a slow build. And, and oftentimes they're kind of getting to a crescendo where they boom, they hit with the verse. And then this is the body of the song, the, the verse and the chorus. Um, and so I usually would kind of cut the intro out for the short form videos um, because I only had so much time. And a verse to a song is typically 15 to 30 seconds. And so oftentimes I could squeeze out, you know, um, a, a verse, maybe a chorus into a 30 second video. Now I've got a nine to 12 minute video and I want the whole thing to fix or to fit, but I also don't want it to be repetitive. Um, so I would do multiple, for a nine to 12 minute video, I'd probably do two or three songs. Um, but that first one, I would want to make like kind of the featured song. Like that was the song I used in the teaser. I want it to be recognizable for the couple. Um, so the intro's back in, the verse, the chorus, the verse. And I should also say, sometimes I would find uh, songs that offered me both lyric and no lyric options. Um, so I could get the version that had both words, you know, people singing and no people singing so that I could cut them together. So now in one version, you've got the words and then you go into the chorus and you've got the words and you go back into the verse. But there's no words suddenly. Now you can kind of maybe put in for the for these wedding videos. It would have been like vows or, or a toast or people just talking. Um, and now I'm not fighting between that narrative and the, the song lyrics. Um, maybe I'm doing a tutorial video. And I just want the intro to my video uh, to have music, and I want it to fade out after that. 
that can be simple. That can be just, you know, you've got your uh, catchy riff or a hook from a song. You, if you fade it in, you fade it in. Maybe it just starts right away. But then as the person is about to start speaking or um, actually, so I like to mix the audio and the uh, narrative, or excuse me, the, the music and the narrative. So I'm going to kind of cross fade. So as the person starts speaking, that comes up, the music's going to go down and they're going to kind of cross paths with each other. So the music's getting quieter as the person's getting louder or starting to speak. Um, and that's a real simple cross fade. It's a, it's a drag and drop edit in Camtasia and most editors um, where you just put, put an audio fade. Um, so that's a simple way, but also we talked about, I could go on about this forever. I'm gonna, until you cut me off. I The 4-4 four, four editing, right? So I, I mentioned that most songs, not all, but most songs have a 4-4 four, four time structure. So they're very repetitive if you want them to be. Uh, you can cut them and repeat them. Now, nine minutes is too long to listen to the same song. Uh, you don't want that. So there is also a, a taste balance in there, right? You have to be subjective and say, okay, I've, I've repeated this too much. Now it's annoying, time for a new song. Um, but you can make it go long. If it's a two minute song, you could probably make it go three and a half or four minutes uh, by doing a little bit of splicing. So there, there's my there's my take on that. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. I, I think uh, I'm feeling like, oh, my gosh, I need to practice and try some of these things. Uh, but I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, boy, who knew? Who knew there was so much that you could do? Because I don't know that I have ever thought that. Like I could take a, a, a two-minute song and make it to three minutes. I've never tried, uh, but that's mm -hmm. on my list of things to, to, to give it a go now. Because no, sometimes I, it's so work frustrating. On every song. I know, but you but it's so frustrating. You find that like, oh, this song's super. Oh, it's not long enough. Yeah, it's just not quite right. long enough. That's even worse. Yeah. Episode well, that, two of sometimes... this: How to Edit Music, Andy, featuring yeah. Andy. We'll yeah. get there. Yeah. Well, sometimes you can take that, you know, so it's so it's just not long enough. That one is actually very fixable in my mind, because now maybe you can take just a small part and loop. And that's way easier than looping like a whole minute and a half section of a song. Right. So if you're doing just like 20 seconds of the song to, to make it loop, there's there's always ways to kind of get in there. You know, there there is struggles, though, like oh, there used to be this great product, Digital Juice. And, and anyone who's been in video for, you know, 10 or 20 years knows the name Digital Juice. They used to have a bunch of motion backgrounds and stuff. One of their, my favorite products that they had was called Stack Tracks. And I don't know if you got to use these, Matt, back in the day. It was great. They they made their own soundtracks and, and it was these songs that had, you know, whatever, if it was two minutes, four minutes, but it was piano, drums, guitar, keyboard, saxophone, and then you could choose which instrument was on or off during it. Like you could actually go in and very simply with the click of a button, turn off the saxophone, turn off the piano and just have like drums and guitar or whatever you wanted. You could also oftentimes, not with all the songs, but with most of them, you could choose your duration and they were loopable. They made it intentionally loopable so that you could make them longer or shorter. It was a brilliant product. I, I, that was one that I was really sad they, they discontinued. Um, and they were, again, they were royalty free and they weren't amazing, you know, ballads or anything like that. But they were good. And uh, if only I had that option, because nowadays there's sometimes where like I go to loop a song and just at the end, the guitar riff's starting to build. And I'm like, no, because then if I loop it back to the beginning, there was no guitar at all. So it doesn't blend. So mm -hmm. there there are some songs that just does not work on. Well, you made me think, Andy, I have played with loops before, like the short little, but it's I, what I build is with a, a series of loops that are meant to be together. It never sounds as good as like an actual song, right? Like it's like, oh, sure. I guess I'll repeat that five times. And now that one, oh, <laughs> what, this is going weird. I don't know. It just doesn't sound good. Yeah. So. Yeah. Loops, man, loops have their place. Um, but at a certain point, we're all going to be like, is this still the same thing? Am I listening to the same thing over and over again? What's happening? Like, and your your brain will immediately shut off to this video because it's just like, I can't listen. Like you were saying with that intro, they were hearing it too many times. It was just like, all right, enough with the guitar riff. Like enough with the loops. Yeah, it's you have to find that magic spot. And it's, again, subjective. All right. Well, we have gone well into, I mean, this has been awesome. This has been amazing. I think uh, we... I, there's so much here. I'm, I'm just like, now I'm thinking like, oh gosh, I want to go find some music. I want to play with it and see if I can make something because it's, it's got me excited to try some, some music. Cause I, I do love music and videos. Don't get me wrong, but I, I, I do struggle with making it feel like it's successful. So this has been very well, helpful have to, for me. Good. I was going to say, you have to want to do it though, too. Like there are too, too many times where like we force ourselves into doing it and then it becomes like, 
kind of a drag because man this is forcing a song into a video that you really didn't plan on putting one in or it just doesn't fit or you can't find the right emotional tie to it it's it can be terrible um and i'm, I'm not sure this helps either you mentioned earlier we have a blog post on the topic i was going to say we also have a youtube video on this topic how to add music to a video uh long i mean this this conversation went more in depth i think but but if anyone wants to check it out we'll try to put that in the show notes too yeah all right. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much. Andy, thank you for carrying the load on this. I mean, you've, you've I don't <laughs> yeah, know. Man. I hope Justin has enjoyed this, but I, I certainly have. My mind is... is just fried. I'm, I, I never knew <laughs> music could be so complex or complicated in videos. And uh, I'm just, you know, I, it was like I was uh, on the edge of a hurricane and was just holding on for dear life. So... Uh, <laughs> Well, with that hanging on to the edge of the hurricane, let's do our final take because, uh, and feel free to share if it's something that you, that's sticking with you or something else, advice, piece of advice you'd want to give. Uh, Justin, let's, let's start with you. Yeah. My advice would be to invest in the music that you're going to use. If you're going to be using music in your videos in any sort of regular format, whether it's one song or multiple songs, Put a little bit of uh, budget aside and actually invest in that and your videos will come out better because you spent a little bit of time and a little bit of money investing in your actual music. Awesome. Andy, summarize yeah. everything you music? just said. <laughs> everything I just said, got it. Actually, I forgot to mention something that Justin just mentioned. I thought about it, which is that yes, and it's an investment. I used to actually, if you're working for clients, I used to actually charge because I wanted to know that I was going to buy good music. And so there was an up fee too that I would I would always include. Um, but no, my, my takeaway from this is going to be that music will affect your viewers' um, response to your video, good or bad. So you have to choose it carefully. You have to edit it carefully. Uh, I do highly recommend you try it, though. I think it's worth the time investment and the financial investment uh, to get the right song, the right music into your video. But it's not something that necessarily is going to be easy. There are things that will make it easier. Uh, but get in there, get your hands dirty, and uh, try adding music to your video. Awesome. My final take is invest in an Andy Owen. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Get someone that just knows how to do this stuff and you'll be better. No, and also I'll put my prices in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> and my final take really is is as you're digging into music, uh, make sure you're spending the time to one, think about how it's gonna impact your users as we've heard. Like what's the emotional appeal? Are you sending the right message? But two do the homework and make sure it's going to sound okay. Be and I, this is because I made that mistake, right? Like I listen to it through different headphones, different ways so that you understand that the music that you've chosen, you've balanced it out because the last thing you want to do is take away from your very important message, whatever that is to, to train, to teach, to persuade, to market to, whatever it might be. You don't want th someone to lose that message because your audio wasn't doing the job of helping them in, in, to invest or engage with whatever it is that you're trying to communicate. So with that said, I want to thank Andy and Justin for a great conversation today. Uh, so much good, rich information. We hope all of you out there are getting value out of hearing our conversations. Uh, I, if nothing else, I know we are. We're taking away a lot from these. But if you do like what you hear, we always love it. If you would leave us a review, you'd leave a like it, subscribe it, do those types of things because that helps us know that you're getting value out of it. And of course, if you have questions, comments, thoughts that you want to share with us, leave them in the comments below. And if there's not comments below, you can always email us at thevisuallounge at techsmith.com. We'd love to hear from you and anything that you have to say. So thanks everybody for tuning in and we will see you all next time. <laughs>